and get started. Let me know when you're recording. Oh. Hi, good morning everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for our Learn for Life presentation. Today we have Jared from Swamp Fitness. He founded this company back in 2012 and he's here today to share, us, share with us some ways that we can work fitness into our busy, busy lives with all the different things we have going on. I also want to remind you all that if uh, you are eligible, you can go onto our LifeWise blog and post what you learned today from watching this presentation for 5,000 stars points. If you have any questions at all about LifeWise, LifeWise rewards, please email me, jmcats at lifestyle.org, or call me at extension 41703. Thank you. Bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, depression, obesity, infertility. These are all health conditions within my personal gene pool. My closest family members actively struggle with these concerns. You see, it's these health challenges that actually drove me to become an advocate of health. Hi, I'm Jared Musson, and I help people overcome barriers that prevent them from reaching their health goals. Today, I'm going to share how to find time to live healthy so that you can look, feel, and be your best you. We all know that living healthy is essential when it comes to having a full and happy life. But did you know that research says that most people struggle with practicing healthy habits because of not having enough time? Why do you think that is? It's because we're busy, right? But what are some other priorities that you might have that might make it a challenge to live healthy? Does anyone have any priorities? Children. Children, absolutely. These are very important to us, right? Any other priorities you can think of? Yeah, single parent. Single parent, like my mother, yeah. Any others? Taking care of your parents. Taking care of your parents. That's, these are all priorities that at times we're putting before ourselves because we, it's important to us. But what if prioritizing our health was the key to being better at these other priorities? And this could mean being better parents. This could mean being more productive at work, having a better life. For instance, you know, when, when starting your day off, what, you know, think about it. What, um, what type of routines do you have? You know, um, you can actually start your day off by, you know, actually, you know, do, do you actually start off by putting your shoes on, lacing them up, going to the front door, opening it up and taking a big whiff of fresh air? And then start off jogging, or maybe a nice walk, because you know that it releases endorphins and it gets, you start your day off feeling amazing? Or do you start off your day by, you know, waking up and actually reaching for <coughs> your cell phone? And, you know, you start checking Facebook updates. And you start checking text messages. And then emails that you might not even respond to at that moment. You know, we all do that. This, you know, you know what I'm talking about. When you scroll on your news feeds, you see what everyone else is up to, liking this, commenting on that, and before you know it, nearly half an hour has gone by. This doesn't only waste time in the morning, but it sets the tone for the rest of the day. You might want to practice healthy habits, exercise in the morning, but you might have to, it might be just you're in a rush in the morning. You might have to, you know, wake up the kids. You might have to, you know, sometimes even skip breakfast and just, you know, get them dressed and, and just get everything ready and then take them to school and it's just, you know, it's a struggle. You gotta get to work on time. What about, you know, sometimes mornings can be hectic, right? What about in the evenings when you get off of work? What type of habits do you have then? Do you get off of work and then 
you go straight to the gym so that you can practice weight training, so that you can be stronger, so that you can have more confidence, have more mental clarity, feel better throughout the day? Twice a week. Twice a week. Two, well, during the week, Tuesday and Thursday, and then I go on Saturdays. Awesome. Minimum. Awesome. I love it. So these are habits that you have. That's excellent. So you, you might want to go to work. I mean, to, to go to exercise and go to the gym right after work. But, you know, again, you might have to actually, you know, go straight to daycare, pick up your kids, and then go straight home so that you can make a quick dinner and uh, do the dishes and then do some laundry. And then you might have to, you know, maybe you take your kids to a soccer game or something like that. So this, what I'm talking about, I'm not saying, um, I. You know, the key to all of this is prioritizing yourself. And when I say that, I do want to make it clear that I'm not saying you shouldn't take your kids to their baseball game. You know, as parents, you know that, you know, if you're a parent, you know that you have to, majority of the time, put your kids before you. But what I'm talking about is your daily habits, the rituals, the routines that you have throughout the day. We all have them whether we like it or not. So again, I'm going to ask you, what are your habits? As I'm describing all these, I mean, you might get off of work and you might just feel emotionally and physically drained. And you might just feel like, I just need to chill. There's nothing wrong with that. But we all have the power to choose our daily habits. It's my hope that today you can take some of these keys that I'm going to share with you and apply them into your busy lives so that you can live more healthy. The first key is to prioritize you, which I've mentioned. And when prioritizing you, you absolutely must start with why it is that you want to live healthy. Has anyone seen the video on YouTube by Simon Sinek that's called Start With Why? So I love this video. The philosophy behind it is powerful. The whole idea is that if you start with why you want to reach a goal, then everything flows out correctly from the inside out. Oh, knowing your why can be extremely powerful. And it's interesting. I can sit here and tell you all of the benefits of practicing healthy habits, but that's not necessarily going to cause you to change. I can tell you that exercise helps you to have a stronger heart, and it helps you to feel better throughout the day. That's not going to cause you to exercise. I can tell you that eating healthy will help you to have more mental clarity, help you to be more sharp throughout the day, but that's not going to cause you to start eating healthy. I can even tell you that it has been proven that exercise helps us to think faster and have more sharpness, and it also has been proven to help us to be more motivated throughout the day. Or I can tell you that there have been clinical studies that have been done that shows that exercise is just as effective as Zoloft and lifting people out of depression. Or is Adderall and helping people to focus. And I know this because I was diagnosed with ADHD. And I don't take any medication, but I absolutely must exercise. It keeps me sane. Do you have a question? Mm -hmm. What's that? I think the same works for children. It's important to keep them going into Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Exercise is, is extremely, extremely helpful. I'll, I'll tell you from experience, to help you to have, you know, I have tons of thoughts that, and it's like my way of like becoming grounded. So absolutely, it will help your kids to be more focused. So as I was mentioning, your why, you have to start with why, right? You have to determine, that's the key to this whole thing. It, you have to make your personal connection as to why you want to live healthy. So again, what is your why? And I encourage you to write it down. There's something about writing it down. My why starts with what I started sharing at the beginning of this presentation. My mom was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and this was all before I was born. She actually lost her three-year-old daughter and as you can imagine, this was extremely painful for her. 
This was hard for her when it happened, and it's hard for her today. So, it's, you know, having bipolar disorder, it actually, you know, there's a mood imbalance. And one day, she could have depression. Another day, she can have uh, just a manic, kind of overexciting, rash decision-making state. And I just wanted to make life easier for her. This was a drive that I had. And it's interesting because I also met other people that also had bipolar disorder, some of whom actually were functioning so well. And I would ask them, you know, what are you doing? And some of them had worse, like they were higher on the spectrum of bipolar disorder. So they were, had a worse case of it. And I would ask them, what is the key? What are you doing that's causing you to function so well? And I started to hear things like, well, I'm consistently exercising. I am eating clean. I cannot, I absolutely cannot have any processed foods. I can't have added sweeteners and added sugars that is in the majority of these products in, at the store. I have to eat clean. I have to eat, like, I, I have to have a plant-based diet. And then they also said things like, I practice meditation. And I, I you know, I, I, as soon as I have any negative thoughts, I have to have a, a plan to get out of it right then and there. Yes? Sleep is also a big um, reason people gain weight because they stay up later, they eat more. Uh, they're, when you're sleep deprived, you're, can't, you, you become chemically imbalanced. Absolutely, 100%. Sleep and stress, these are all absolutely big, huge factors within this. So, you know, when I learned all of these habits that the people that, you know, the person that I met with bipolar disorder was practicing and she was functioning so well, I had to run and go share this with my mom. I had to see if I can make my mom's life a little bit easier, a little bit higher quality of life. And, you know, I told her, like, you know, all these habits, this can help you. This is helping this person. And this didn't cause her to change. Why do you think that is? because she didn't want to, and she didn't have a good enough reason as to why she should. So again, I ask you, why is it that you want to live healthy? This is the first step. You have to start here. Has anyone made a decision because of somebody else convincing you to do that, but you didn't really make it for yourself? How long do those decisions last? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm asking this question because whenever we're forced into doing something, usually that doesn't really last. We didn't take ownership and decide it for ourselves. So that's the other part of prioritizing you. You have to take ownership and you have to decide, I want this. So prioritize you, find out your why that drives you, and then take ownership for your health. Number two, oh, this is actually, I'm sorry, I want to share a story really quick before I move on to number two as an example of somebody that actually prioritized themselves. And uh, this is about a girl named Kate. And Kate actually came to Swamp Fitness because she had a goal of wanting to lose weight. Kate, I, you know, I met with Kate and after a few times of meeting with her, she got into a vulnerable place. And she started to express that she had an unhealthy relationship with food. She expressed that she would turn to food any time that there was a really challenging thing that happened in her life, and that was her go-to. And any time she experienced any really challenging emotions, food was there. Whether it was sadness, food was there to make her feel better. Or even excitement, food was there. And I met with her and I asked her, Kate, why do you want to lose weight? Why do you want to reach this goal? And she started to open up and express to me, well, you know, I, I just, I don't want to have to worry about breaking plastic chairs when I sit in them. And I don't want to have to take up two seats in an airplane. It's humiliating. And so I said, okay, I, I definitely, I can understand that. Well, why? why? Why do you want to change your life? Why do you want to change these things? And then she said, well, I've always had a dream of, of just being able to travel the world and go on adventures and just do exciting things and have fun. 
And right now, my body is not giving me the energy. I don't have the energy to do the things that I've always wanted to do. See, I wanted to live life to the fullest. Kate's why was powerful. It was powerful enough for her to reach out for help, and it was powerful enough for her to make a change in her life. And from that point on, I told Kate, start connecting with your wife. Start actually thinking about this every time, as, like all, as many times as you possibly can. Every time that you're tempted to turn to food, think about this. Because you really want it. I can see it. You, you didn't move forward to talk to me you know, for any other reason other than you want this really badly and you know why you want it. So think about that. So that's what she did. Kate connected with her why over and over and over again. And this actually caused her to end up lose, losing 85 pounds working with Swamp Fitness, followed by an additional 35 pounds working on her own. And it, again, it's practicing those healthy habits. Number one is prioritize you. Know your why. Take ownership. Number two, evaluate your habits. Evaluate your habits. And when evaluating your habits, you have to start with defining what healthy living is to you. And write it down. Again, I told you earlier that write, there's something about writing it down that makes it more real, and it helps you to be accountable to it. It's not just a thought anymore. So what is living healthy to you? For me, it's seven hours of sleep, at least seven hours of sleep every night. As she mentioned, sleep is very important in all aspects of health, not just weight loss. It helps us to think clearly. Also, I practice meditation and prayer anytime I'm feeling negative stress. I try to do that daily, but also it's a, there's a game plan for me that if I'm feeling negative stress, I, I, that's what I'm turning to. Like as soon as I'm aware of it, I have a go-to, so that I'm not in that constant state of stressing out. I also try to eat healthy 80% of the time. I'm trying to eat clean, whole food and try to avoid processed food and fried food, just fresh food, 80% of the time. Then, I'm also trying to exercise. For me, it's at least five days a week and at least 10 minutes, at minimum of 10 minutes each of those five days. And you might be thinking, 10 minutes? That's it? And my response is, yeah. Sometimes I don't have time to work out for an hour. I don't have time to work out for even 30 minutes. Sometimes I know that a 10 minute effective workout is a world of difference than not doing anything at all. So what is healthy living for you? And by the way, in regards to the 10 minutes of exercise, for this very reason, I actually created a 10 minute effective workout video that I can actually send to you. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I'll pass around a piece of paper, paper for you to sign up to receive that. But again, what is healthy living for you? Take the time to actually just define it. This is another step after determining why you want to live healthy, is figuring out what that means to you. And another part for me of living healthy is that I, I love to be signed up for some type of challenging fitness event. Because what that does for me is it holds me accountable to actually practice the healthy habits. And it's just something excited to, you know, it's exciting for me to look forward to. Has anyone heard of GORUCK? Yes. Yes, you've heard of that? Yeah. GORUCK is awesome. And, you know, a, a lot of you probably haven't heard of this. GORUCK is a military event that's led by a special operations cadre that has the, the mission of basically getting every participant to be pushed past their, like what they can do. Like pushing them past what, you know, their, their comfort zone and really challenging people. And also turning all the individuals into one unit, one team, instead of individually focused. Oh, by the way, uh, we actually have to wear a 30 pound rucksack the entire time <laughs> while lifting loads of heavy weight. And we're trying to accomplish these just crazy, really challenging tasks that the cadre is telling us to do. 
And we, th that picture up there on the top left is actually my girlfriend carrying me in a go ruck. You can see the, the rucksack on her back. And she, we did this last year, I convinced her to do it. And um, she actually surprised me. She, uh, she signed us both up for the upcoming go ruck here in Gainesville on May 20th this year. She did that for Christmas, she just surprised me. It was aw I'm like, I'm super pumped about it. Um, and last year, by the way, we actually, we started at 9 p.m. This is another fun fact. We started at 9 p.m. and we didn't finish until 7 a.m. the following morning. Pretty awesome. <laughs> so I'm super pumped about it. It's on May 20th. Who wants to join me? Does anybody want to do go rock with me? What's the age requirement? <laughs> <laughs> There's no age requirement. You just got to be, it's, it, it pushes you past your mental, mental state. Oh, Maria, you know your age. <laughs> I can be as on my back with them, <laughs> So some of you are kind of like iffy about it. Some of you, I, I saw some big eyes. I saw some like, mm, no way, I'm not doing that. I mean, does this not sound like fun to you? I do it all the time. I was actually in the army for five years, and I've been in the reserve for two. So awesome. That is really cool. So do you like this type of? I mean, we broke with 45 pounds on our back and full battle rattle for 12 miles, so it's <laughs> okay. kinda. So you know exactly yeah. the type of stuff that goes on over here. Well, if this isn't fun to you, what is fun for you? Don't think that you're going to go jogging three days a week if you don't like running. And if you don't know what is fun, Try stuff. There's a world full of fun activities that you can do, that you can actually make a part of your healthy habits that you might actually enjoy. And yeah. The color run is more my speed. Color run. That's awesome. <laughs> that sounds like fun. It's the, with the powder, and the, they throw the powder on you, and you get all colorful. That's awesome. That's, I do that. I've never done one. I think I might, though. Twice. A lot of fun. That's awesome. By the way, there's a, if you go to GainesvilleConnect.com, this is a... a a resource that you can use to find fun activities in the community. So who knows, maybe you'll like high intensity interval training and walking or running on weekdays, and then like kayaking or rock climbing on weekends. You don't know until you try. Now, the other part of evaluating your habits, so you define what healthy living is, but then you have to actually Determine, is there any habits that I have that is taking away time that is not serving me? And the first thing that comes to mind is watching too much TV or spending too much time on social media. I'm not saying these things are bad. I do them, and that's fine. Like, they, you know, connecting with others through social media, that's, that's awesome. But I call these time suckers because... When you start to do them, you might think, I'm only going to do this for 15 minutes. And then before you know it, it turns into 30 minutes. And then one hour, and sometimes two hours or longer. So, you know, a, a helpful tool, if you're not sure where your time is going, is to actually uh, write down everything that you do every day, the time that you do it, everything that you do for a week. And this sounds kind of crazy. It's like, why would I do that? But... This is a really helpful tool to like, kind of evaluate your habits and see where your time is going. And most people that do this actually find that I'm spending a lot of time doing things that I really don't want to be doing. That's why you do this after you prioritize you and you, you know, this is the second part. And the other thing is with nutrition. Is, it's the same idea. There's, you know, we have SWAT fitness clients do this. It's you, you fill out a nutrition log. You just write everything that you eat down for a whole week and the time and everything you drink as well. And it's kind of the same concept. Most people that do this actually find that they're surprised at what they're putting in their body because they weren't aware of it. These are both really helpful tools. And if you uh, would like this, uh, just a blank nutrition log, you can just email me. I'll be happy to send you one. Um, but yeah, most people just find that you know, I'm, I'm shocked at where my time is going, what I'm eating, etc. So, it's, it's definitely helpful to do that. Now, I want to go ahead and share a story of uh, somebody 
that did a really good job at evaluating his habits. His name is Anthony, and his goal, he came to Swamp Fitness also, his goal was to lose 50 pounds. And he wanted to, uh, he just he kind of told me off the bat, he's like, hey look Jared, I struggle with exercising, and I just don't really have the motivation, and I just, I also struggle with eating healthy, I just, it's just not what I do, and these are the two areas, I think I got everything else, but this is where I need help. So the first thing that we did was we went to the grocery store and he started showing me, okay, these are the type of food products that I eat. And I would take it and I would uh, explain to him my philosophy on nutrition, which I try to make as simple as possible. And you know, I would explain that these ingredients, a lot of these ingredients that are in here are preservatives, are added sweeteners, artificial sweeteners, and these are all designed to actually uh, have a longer shelf life for these products and also to make them more palatable so that we can become addicted to them and to make these companies that make them more money. And as you can see, and Anthony noticed right away, I have a lot of bitterness towards our food industry. <laughs> <laughs> so I started explaining, you know, instead of these ingredients that are so complex that have, you know, these food items that you're, you're picking out that have all of these great ingredients, try to have the least amount of ingredients. Simplify it. Try to have more, think about like a head of broccoli. I mean, where's the ingredient list on a head of broccoli? It's just a head of broccoli. There is no ingredient list. And that's the same thing for all the vegetables and all the fruits. So try to have more whole foods. And I would even, like, so sometimes he would be like, but that doesn't taste as good. And, and I'd say, okay, no problem. Let's try to find whole foods where we can satisfy your, your, you know, your taste buds, you know, and start experimenting with this. And then when it came to exercising, I would show up to where he lived or where he worked uh, two days a week, and I would give him a really challenging workout that was to help, to help him reach his goal. But then also I'd hold him accountable to work out a few other days. And, you know, I'd always be asking him, hey, you know, how's the eat, you know, are you eating healthy and like, what, is, what are you eating? And I'd just ask him that. And he stuck with changing his habits. Anthony ended up reaching his goal. And this is Anthony after doing so. Wow. So, number one is to prioritize you. Number two, and, and again, you have to focus on your why, determine, start there, and then take ownership for your health. Number two is evaluate your habits so that you know what it is that you want to live healthy, like what that definition is for you, and then figure out if there's anything that you can take out of your habits that is not helping you. And then number three is plan ahead. Plan ahead. What is the difference between discipline and self-control? Discipline is the ability to do the things that we don't want to do, even though we don't want to do them. Self-control is the ability to not do the things that we want to do, even though we want to do them. And having discipline and self-control is essential when you're trying to change a habit. Which is also why you need to start with everything that I've listed before. You have to start with prioritizing you and determining why, and then you have to define what your healthy living is and take ownership, and then you can plan ahead and start to be disciplined and have self-control. And also, to help you with discipline and self-control is accountability. Accountability makes it so that it's not just about you anymore. There's somebody else. It could be a friend. It could be a significant other. It could be a personal trainer. It's somebody else partnering with you. They're on mission to help you to reach your goals. How much more likely and, and empowered will you feel if you have support of someone that's constantly asking you, hey, have you been... You know, have you been exercising? I, you know, I know you can do it and encouraging you along the way. Accountability is very empowering. And 
One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make all the time is they, they get so fixated and focused on their big, you know, long-term result goal. I'm not saying that you shouldn't think about your long-term results and envision, envision your goal happening, but when that's all you're focusing on is, for instance, like I want to lose 50 pounds, I want to lose 50 pounds, and that's it, that can be overwhelming. It, you know, it's, it's interesting because you know, our body weight, for instance, it fluctuates throughout the day. And like that's a normal thing, like because of water weight and stress and sleep, like you were mentioning. I mean, these are all, uh, these are all. There's so many factors, so it's it's not abnormal to gain a pound or two or something like that, or not lose weight, even when you're living a healthy lifestyle because of these normal things. So you you don't want to focus on the long-term results. You want to focus on the daily habits. Let the results be a byproduct of focusing on your daily habits. This is where it all starts, and this is where this is how you you live healthy. And then the other thing is, I want to encourage you to actually schedule your daily habits. And this is an example of me trying to schedule my daily habits. And I don't always do this. I don't. This is not every day for me. But if I'm intentional on the days that I have time to be able to do that, and I can say, okay, I know that tomorrow. You know, I can actually fit this in. I can actually exercise for 20 minutes, you know, and whatnot. Um, I could actually, you know, spend a little bit of time praying or, or meditating, and then I, you know, I can accept. You get what I'm saying. And you might be thinking, schedule my healthy habits. That sounds ridiculous. And think about it though. We schedule the things that are important to us. We schedule meetings that we have to be at at work. We schedule our, our dentist appointment. We schedule hanging out with friends when we want to go out to eat or something. It's important to us. So if you prioritize you and you know that healthy living is important to you, this is a really helpful tool. And you might be thinking, my schedule is nothing like that. It's crazy. It's all over the place. I have so many things to do. That's okay because my way is not necessarily the right way. And also, you can actually schedule, well, you can actually just fit in healthy habits into the busy life that you're already living. For instance, when you have a decision between the elevator and the stairs, always take the stairs. That's an opportunity to get a little workout in. Yes? A lot of people here will get up and take a 10, 15 minute break and walk around the building. Yeah? Three four times. That's awesome. Two or three times a day. That's awesome. And that's, I think everyone should do that. That's really cool. And then the same thing goes for when you, you know, you're going to different places, whether it's work or the grocery store. You could park way too far. Try to park in the last parking space instead of what everyone else is trying to do by parking in the front parking space. And this is, of course, if you have an extra minute to spare. It's just, this gives you a little exercise, a little extra in throughout the life that you're already living. Or at work, you can make a goal to have a water bottle and to fill it up every two hours. That way you're getting enough water throughout the day, but then you're also getting a little exercise and you know, clearing your brain out a little bit by taking a walk to the water fountain. Exactly, and doing things like you just mentioned. Just taking a little walk, taking a break, that's perfectly good, yes. Do you allow yourself um, to um, have things that happen day to day to mess up with your, your schedule, your day to day schedule? Yeah, so sometimes I'm not able to do everything. Like if there's, you know, something, you, you never know, something very important can come up. So sometimes I have to just say, I can't do that. Um, and I have to make a decision. I have to prioritize that over my health, which I'm aware of. And it's okay because sometimes we have to do that. But I'm just saying that making a schedule helps so much to actually do it. There's accountability, so, yeah, but absolutely. And the other things is that, like, how cool would it be if you actually scheduled, like, things like family workout time? Like, so, like, you're, if you're already spending time with your family or your friends, what if instead of, you know, watching TV every, you know, all, like, you know, I don't know what your habits are, but I'm just saying, like, instead of, you know, maybe you, you still do these things, but then also maybe once or twice a week you have, like, a family workout time or a significant other workout time. It's just cool, you can actually combine 
your healthy habits with what you're already doing. Yes? I tricked my child to go to the pool and then tell him that I can beat him to the other side and it ends up being exercise and he doesn't realize that. That's awesome. I love that. that. <laughs> yeah, all summer long. <laughs> That's really cool. So he's getting some exercise in, you're getting some exercise in, and you're doing it together. A little healthy so. competition. Yeah, and you can do the same thing with making healthy meals, right? You can make healthy meals together. And in regards to meals, you know, think about it. This is all about being proactive versus reactive, right? So when we're proactive, we're thinking ahead about how, you know, this, that's the entire thing about planning ahead, right? We're, we're planning to, be, to make the right decisions before we get to that time. Because, like, for instance, after work, if you're really tired, you're exhausted, you don't feel like making, uh, spending 30 minutes or an hour to make a healthy meal, and you just want to eat, you know, you, you're hungry, right? We're going to usually turn to the easiest thing, which isn't always the healthiest thing. So doing something like meal prepping, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, is, is a, an excellent strategy to be able to practice, you know, to eat healthy throughout the week. You could take, you know, like Saturday or Sunday and just go ahead and prepare your healthy meals through the week. Take, you know, you, there's, there's recipes where you can just take a couple hours and you can do that with your family or your significant other or whoever. And this is just planning ahead, setting, setting it up so that you can live a healthy life throughout your week. The other thing I like to plan ahead with is actually scheduling celebration time. I mean, how much more likely will you be to practice healthy habits if you know that you're going to be rewarded with something that you really love to do or that's exciting to you because of doing that? It's like, make, put it together, you know? Like, so plan ahead. Maybe you like going to the beach. Plan a weekend trip to the beach or a little weekend trip or go into your favorite restaurant. This can, this can be powerful too. You know, it makes it more exciting. So I want to share uh, one more, uh, another testimonial. And this, um, this is a woman named Dolores. And Dolores has been working with Swamp Fitness for two and a half years now. And believe it or not, this woman is 100 years old. She lives in my complex. Does she really? Yes. You know her? I thought I recognized you. Oh, yeah. You, you probably. with her grandma. I, wait, say that again. Her grandson? I know her grandson. Yeah, he's got the beard and all that. Yes, yeah. Yes, I've known her for years. She's my neighbor. That's awesome. Oh, so my I, gosh. <laughs> I work out with her three days a week. So. I know, I thought I recognized her. She's my neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, believe it or not, this woman is 100 years old. And, you know, it, it blows my mind every time I'm with her. And it's, you know, the first thought, like, the reason why I wanted to share her, a little bit about her with Plan Ahead was because it's like every time I leave her, from working out with her, she, the first thing she asks me is, hey, when are you going to come next? When are you going to come back? And I'd be like, I'll be back in two days. And then she'd say, hey, did you put it in the calendar? Like, every time. And I'm just like, yeah, I, I put it in the calendar. And it's like, it's almost like it was ingrained in her mind to, like, plan ahead, you know? And, you know, first of all, I started asking her, like, I had to, like, figure out her secret. I mean, this woman's 100 years old, so I would ask her, like, what's the key to living such a long life? You, you don't meet that many people that are 100. She's, like, the only person I know. And I would ask her this, and she would say a different answer every single time. And I thought that was pretty cool. One time she told me, you can't be a couch potato, you got to be active. She'd say, uh, another time she said, you can't eat garbage, you gotta eat your vegetables. And then another time she said, you can't worry about all the small things. You gotta have fun. And uh, Dolores and I will be celebrating her 101st birthday in October of this year. Cause she's doing awesome. So I'm almost done today. Um, I just want to uh, tell you that I'm going to be hanging around after this presentation to answer any questions. So if you have individual questions, just feel free to come up to talk to me. And also, I will be passing around a sheet of paper so that you can sign up to receive that 10-minute workout video, as well as have fitness and nutrition tips to be emailed to you throughout your week to keep you healthy and motivated.
But I also want to say all of these stories that I'm sharing, these are real people. And you can do it too. You can live a healthy lifestyle. You can fit it into your busy schedule. You are powerful. And it's, it's, this is real. Like You can do it. So I, I want to end with one last story. And we're going to call this woman Kim because she didn't want to have her pictures up or her name be talked about today. But I had to share a story. It was too powerful. So Kim was a lot like Kim. I'm sorry, it was a lot like Kate that I mentioned in the beginning. Except that she was more than twice her age. She was in her 50s. Kate was 22. And you know, Kate, uh, Kate started off, she actually weighed more than 400 pounds, but Kim was in her 50s, and she had a lot of weight to lose. And she had tried everything. She, she really wanted to be, just have the freedom to just not have this burden. Like, she just wanted it badly. She wanted to be healthy and to lose the weight. But she had tried everything. She had tried, you know, she tried exercising, she tried practicing healthy habits, she tried, she tried every workout plan you can think of. She tried every diet you can personally think of. But nothing was working. It wasn't until she was in her 50s that she finally realized what was preventing her from living a healthy lifestyle. It was her perspective. You see, she looked at working out as, oh, I got to exercise in order to lose weight. I gotta do it. I, I gotta. And then she looked at eating healthy as, you know, I really, I really don't like this food that much. I like that food so much better, but I have to do it so that I can lose weight. And you can already see how this perspective is already setting her up for failure. She looked at it as it was a burden. Like she didn't really want it. So she'd try to do this and she'd go in cycles. You know, she'd get a little bit of results and then, but then, you know, she would make a change. It wasn't until her 50s that she started to change perspective and look at healthy living as an adventure. That changed everything. She started looking at working out as what new fun activities she can do. And she started trying tons of different things. And finding out what she enjoyed the most. And she loved swimming. She found out she just, swimming was her jam. So she started waking up every morning, every single morning to start swimming. That was just a daily habit, every day. It was a part of her thing. And then she started looking at eating healthy as, man, like what new recipes can I make today? Like what, how can I, like what can I make, make and, and what spices can I use and herbs can I use? And she would start creating these really delicious recipes. And I've tasted some of them and they taste amazing. So it was an adventure to her. She, start, she actually made her own cookbook. So she had like her own recipes and it was super exciting. Kim ended up losing more than 200 pounds when she was in her 50s. And this was all because she shifted her perspective and she chose to look at it as an exciting thing. Number one, prioritize you. Find out your why. Why is it that you want to live healthy? Take ownership because you're worth it. And then evaluate your habits to define what healthy living is and then what you, you know, how you can better prioritize your time so that you can live healthy. Number three, plan ahead so that you can make a part of it a part of your life. Number four, make it an adventure. And always be asking where loving yourself fits into your life. Thank you.